Hey, Denon High School, this is Mr. Aiden, and we are doing 4.1 phase diagrams and triple point diagrams, and this is not a phase diagram or a triple point diagram right here, but we're going to take a look at what AP Chemistry says is each of those. This is what we call a phase diagram or a heating curve of water. Take a look at our axes, our temperature, and our heat, heat added. Okay, take a look right down here, and we have a solid down here. Of course, at a low temperature, not a lot of heat added. We're going to have a solid in this middle part here. We're going to have a liquid. And on this upper part, we're going to have a gas. Okay, um, Let's come back down to the solid right here. The solid, when we're going from a solid to a liquid, we, we see the temperature flat lines. It, it stays constant, but we're still adding heat. And you can see this way, we're, we're melting. And if we go this way on the line, we are freezing. Okay, And this line, if you can see, there's a, an amount of heat that we're adding. This heat is called the heat of fusion. And when we're melting, that is positive heat of fusion. We're actually absorbing heat in order to melt it. Okay, And that exact same amount of heat is used to freeze it on the other side, but that would be negative heat, which meant it would actually release heat. Okay, And I want you to stop thinking about things when they freeze getting cold. That's not what's actually happening. When something freezes, the substance has released an amount of heat in order to freeze. Okay, let's come to this uh, this upper plateau right here. Again, the temperature stays constant, and this is when we're either going from a liquid to a gas, which is called vaporizing or vaporization. If we're going the other way on this line, that is called condensation or condensing. Okay, and this heat amount amount of heat needed to do this is called the heat of vaporization. Now, when we're vaporizing, again, we are absorbing heat. It's positive amount of energy. When it's going the other way, it's the exact same amount of energy or heat to negative or to release that amount of heat. And again, when we condense something, when we it goes from a gas to a liquid, it is releasing an amount of heat. Now, guys, I want you to think, if it takes 100 joules of energy in order to vaporize a liquid to a gas, then it's going to take a hundred, or it's going to release a hundred joules of energy to condense again. Okay. Now there's two things I really want you to get from this graph. The first thing is is that whenever we have a change in the state of matter, the temperature is held constant. I'll say that again. Whenever we have a change in the state of matter, the temperature is held constant. There's still heat being added though. So where is this heat going? The heat is going into breaking the intermolecular attractions. The heat is not going to break bonds. It's not going into break bonds because when, when we boil water, it's still water. When we freeze water, it's still water. Okay, It hasn't changed the H2O structure. It's not broken into O's and H's and things like that. We're not breaking bonds. We're breaking the attractions. That's point number one. Um, and that's what's happening during these plateaus is these plateaus, the heat is going into breaking the attraction. Okay. The second point is, is that whenever we have a change in temperature, it's due to an increase of heat. And this is because the amount of kinetic energy of the particles gets greater. Let me give you an example. Down here in a solid, every time we change the temperature, um, it's because we're changing the kinetic energy. We're actually um, either making it more kinetic energy or less. Same thing with a solid and a liquid and a gas. Okay, So these are the two points we want to see from this graph. Let's take a look at this second graph. This is called a triple point diagram. Um, some people call it a phase diagram. Okay, This, you can see, we have a solid in this blue section. Liquid is green section and gas is in this red section. And you can see what's on your axes. You're dealing with pressure and temperature here. So we're not just dealing with temperature change here. Whenever we cross over from a solid to liquid, it's melting and freezing. Whenever we go to a liquid gas, that's vaporization and condensation. And you can see we can also change directly from a solid to a gas. And we call that sublimation, subliming. Okay, And the other way is called deposition. Uh, the triple point right here is the point where we are both a solid, liquid, and gas all at the exact same time. Triple point. And we also have a critical point where um, there, we cannot distinguish between a liquid and a gas. Now, real quick, I want to show you exactly um, the difference between a solid, liquid, and gas. Take a look at water. This is water attracted. You can see the hydrogens are attracted to the oxygens. And you can see the size of this. There's a large volume. 
But if I change this to a uh, to a liquid, and I'll come to a solid, liquid, or gas, when we change this water to a liquid, you can see it's kind of flowing over each other. Okay. Whereas a gas, high kinetic energy, they're just bouncing off each other, a lot of collisions. Okay. But when we take a look at neon, here's neon as a gas, and as a liquid, and as a solid. And you see the biggest difference between neon as a solid and water as a solid is water has a lot of space between a lot of volume, and that's why water floats. And I want you to take a look at the, the phase diagrams. Look in this bottom corner right here of the phase diagram of water. You can see this line is going back to the left. Okay, That tells you that water as a solid will float um, in its own liquid. But neon, you can see this line is curved to the right, which means that its neon's solid will actually sink in its liquid. Guys, I hope this made sense on phase diagrams and triple point diagrams, and I'll catch you later.